I made sure that I was learning how to bring value to the table. So when I speak, it carries weight because I'm not speaking because I don't know what to say or because I just like to talk. I'm speaking because I know what I'm saying. Your environment, your society, where you live contributes majorly to what you become. Mm -hmm. But when you become of age where you have a brain and you, you are aware, let me say that, when you become aware of who you are, yeah. then you begin to learn, unlearn, and relearn some things. Take charge of your life. Yeah. Tony, as long as you are not hurting anyone or going against the will of God. Yeah. Continue, Jerry. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another thrilling episode of Behind the Filter. If this is your first time watching, Behind the Filter is a space where we dive into the captivating stories of individuals navigating the delicate balance between real life and social media. I am Okolopis Uche, your host for this amazing podcast series. And my guest for today is a talent manager, brand strategist, and entertainment consultant. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Tenny Oyewale in the studio. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you look amazing, by the way. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to Behind the Future. It's such a pleasure to have you in the Thank studio you so today. Much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are a leading figure managing talent, African talent on a global stage. And that honestly is so inspiring. So today we'll be discussing your incredible journey and, yeah. you know, uncovering everything that goes on behind the filters of social media. It's okay. going to be <laughs> a really interesting episode. So make sure you stay with us. And yeah, let's get right into it. Let's go. <laughs> So what initially drew you to the world of content creation and entertainment? Honestly, I've always had like a love for everything aesthetically pleasing, pictures. I love taking pictures growing up. I love dressing up. I love interacting with people and all of that. So when the social media era came and it was a thing and everyone started, I mean, creating there it was very easy for me to transition because i was already doing that on facebook <laughs> so it was very easy to transition when instagram came when there was this app that everybody was popping meeting new friends in all honesty like social media then used to be a place to meet new friends mm. especially people not um in your space or in your region or you didn't have access to just like connect with people and that's what it was for me then we started to drop nice pictures I already like taking pictures, so I started uploading my nice pictures there. And yes, that's I just found myself in that space. Interesting. <laughs> I know. I mean, I get your point about saying that people used to come to social media to find friends, but yeah. I don't think that's the... Nah. That's not the MO. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like the closest people in my life yeah. right now, I found there, and these are friendships that have lasted 14 years, 13 years, 10 years. Really? I found them on, on social media and that's how we built our friendship. But now, if you want to find any friend, it will be around the way. <laughs> no, for real. Like, it's, that's just the reality of the world we live in right yeah. now. Like, it's just, it's really complicated. Mm -hmm. So, but you have a bachelor's degree in Chinese and can speak Mandarin. Oh, yeah. You, did, you dug that out. <laughs> yes. Which is a unique, you know, background for someone in, an, in the entertainment space. Why mm -hmm. did you decide to study this language? So I did not see this future, right? Yeah. If someone had told me like years back, this is what I would be doing. Of course, I was, I knew this was going to happen, but I didn't know how soon it was going mm -hmm. to happen. Or let me say there was no, there was no industry like this. Of course, when growing up, everyone just wanted to be a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer and all of that. It was only like creative. I mean, they were creatives, but it was not a thing mm -hmm. that it is now. So I just wanted to, like of course get after secondary school i wrote jam and all of that i didn't get my desired course so long story long story cut story short i found myself in a position where i had to pick two languages to study um uh, french or chinese and i'm like okay let's think about this Wait, really i had just a day to decide i'm like okay everybody i at that time, like, I knew a lot of people that were speaking French. They were going to Kotonou, Benin, yeah. and all these places. They were speaking French. I'm like, let me do something different, right? What everybody's not doing. That's I always like to stand out or plow the route that is not easily done. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, let's do this. And I remember when I told, like, my family members, hey, 
trust me, first, I'm mixed. My mom is Igbo. My dad is Yoruba. And this is a oh. child that cannot speak. And that child, I could not speak Yoruba. I could not speak anything in Igbo. The only thing I understood was English language. <laughs> and you're just coming from nowhere and telling them that you want to do it's Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> you know, first make fun, they first made fun of me, ching, 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 saying all things. I'm like, ah, okay, now we have to deal with this. But my mom was like, you know what, do it. If you do it for a year and you can't fit in or it's a struggle. Because I wanted to be an accountant. Oh. I was very passionate about, I want to be an accountant. I want to read ICANN. I want to be a chartered accountant. That was the MO around me then. <laughs> I couldn't wait to join my sisters, you know, and all of that. So I was like, okay, let me do it for one year. If it's not working, I start again. I yeah. go and write jam again and do it. And I mean... Yeah, I finished four I mean, years. Finished. I also went to um, Sojo University in Jiangsu province in China to read Chinese studies. And it was good. Finished with a good grade too. Wow. So, yeah. Honestly, that's like so interesting because like I don't think I know or I've met anyone that actually studied Chinese. Yeah, because when I did, it was the second set in Nigeria. Wow. Doing it as a degree. So it was, and I'm sure, I don't think it's still in existence now, but I mean, the old study thing is, is now and you did yeah. it for four years. Yeah. I've what was the experience like it. learning Chinese from like scratch? Ah, <laughs> first, Chinese is the most difficult language in the world. I remember when I, I mean, I was able to scale through and my younger brother wanted to follow the path. I'm like, if you don't get out of this path, <laughs> if you don't get out of this place. He tried. He went to Confucius Institute. It's like a, um, not a degree, like a lesson where mm. people go and le- he tried, tried, tried. I'm like, leave this thing alone. I don't advise you to. It's not easy like that. Because you have to also write characters. So writing is different from speaking. And I, I did it as a degree. So imagine doing listening, doing speaking. I also lived in China. We had wow. to communicate with Chinese people as a black girl. Man, it was a phase of my life. People that remember Tenny Chinese <laughs> or Tenny China, they are OGs because it was a really interesting phase in my life, which I'm actually thankful for. I'm actually thankful that I went through that fa- that phase. I, I It was my first time leaving the country also when I went to school in China. Mm. So it was very eye-opening. I met people from all parts of the world, international students, people from different religions. Mm. Growing up, the only thing I know is Christian, Christian. <laughs> Muslim, yeah. and traditional worshiper. Yeah. I'm hearing some things. I'm like... The Buddhists. Okay. <laughs> then I live in a country where something drops on the floor and you can't say, Jesus is like mm. get out of the class like it, like it's not a country that practices Christianity, Christianity yeah. so at, like the Buddhist the Buddhist way and I mean it's a, it was a lot so that phase I'm forever thankful for it because that year was the year that molded me I, I learned a lot I grew yeah and I came back to Nigeria better wow <laughs> that's lovely honestly it's such an inspiring story that like you didn't even choose this yep. but eventually you know, <laughs> and I made you. it work for myself. I didn't have a choice. I was not about to waste my parents' money. <laughs> I understand that. Like, that's so valid. So yeah. what was the transition like from, you know, studying Chinese and, you know, being in this Chinese environment to moving into digital and entertainment space? Like I said, yeah. I knew that I wanted to be in the entertainment space, mm. but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to just be an entrepreneur in the space. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to be an influencer. Everything was just starting up at the time where I was making the decision. Mm. So for me, I just wanted to get the degree first. And at least I have a, a that was a backup for me. Like at the, at the time when I want to chase my passion, if it doesn't work, at least you I have, have a degree where yeah. I can get a job. I knew my friends in my school then knew that from school, I was already on YouTube. I was already a YouTuber. I was already <laughs> organizing shows in China. And I was very popular in school. I was also the cost rep. I was the Chinese girl. In I was the China? Nige- yeah, I was the Nigerian wow. girl that everybody wanted to know, like, who is this girl? Who is this girl? I was already cooking for Nigerians. I was cooking <laughs> fried rice. Like, I was popular. I've yeah. always been popular growing up. So it made it easy to identify, to know people, to mm. identify people. Even though I was very selective about yeah. people that I was engaging with. But yeah, I've always been that social butterfly. So I knew that I was going to follow that path. Wow. But I wasn't sure how. So when I came back to... 
um, University of Lagos because I had to do one year in University of Lagos, like an exchange program. Okay. At the time I came back, all my friends were always older than me. They were already, like, everybody was already doing great things. I had friends that were celebrities already. And it was just like, finish this coaching and enter this industry. <laughs> so I was just reading, really, because I mean, it was difficult. I can ah, imagine. To read Chinese. And, ah, and also to, to write one. the characters. Because I, I write my exams in characters. Oh my God. So I have to write. I'm not... You're not. I'm not saying it alone. I have to write essays. And you know how like they're very meticulous I, with their. I, I did all of that. Don't oh, worry. Wow. I did all of that to graduate. <laughs> it's a degree to graduate. Yeah. So doing all of that in school, I started businesses already when I go back to Nigeria. Even in China, I was doing import exports. I was doing Burundi. I mean. <laughs> I, I've also do <laughs> jack of all trades. I've done usually. many things, <laughs> so I was doing that already. So when I came back to Nigeria, I just saw that. Oh, I mean, I lost touch with a lot of people also when I school. Like I said, I was fighting for my life. Yeah, I was fighting for I a mean, degree. Understandably, so I lost touch with a lot of people. But when I got back, I started to pick myself, started to connect with people, and I mean, I just transitioned and yeah. I found myself. So would you say studying Chinese was like a blessing in disguise? Yes, yes, it was. My first job was because I could speak Chinese. Even and my <sighs> second job, like every, it opened doors for me. Like when I enter a space, and I mean, now I'm not even as fluent as I used to be because I've completely like left that mm. space to really focus on this passion thing called social media, talent management, and all of that. But at that time, where I, I thought I was going to be an interpreter, I was taking it very serious. Wow. I used to engage with a lot of Chinese people. It, opened, it was such a blessing in disguise. If I knew that I would not even be doing that, <laughs> maybe I would not have stressed myself like I did. Yeah. But everything worked together for my good. I love that. <laughs> I really love that. <laughs> so can you share a pivotal moment in your career or in your journey, early on in your journey, journey that made you realize that this is what you wanted to do? This was your calling, social media, talent hmm. management. So I think the calling for me is talent management, mm, right? Yeah. But of course, using social media as a, a medium of yeah. expression. Um, when I started, um, when I moved to TikTok, when I started working at TikTok, of course, I had some board creators. I started to interact with people. Like I said, before then, I was just a YouTuber. I was an influencer on Instagram. I was just that girl that liked taking pictures, uploading, going for events. I had a lot of friends in the media space. I had a lot of celebrity friends. We chilled together and all of that. But when I started to work with people, um, then I started to find fulfillment in actually grooming talents mm. from zero, watching them grow. I saw how they were very, very expressive with, they were very vulnerable with me. They, they shared their journey with me, their ideas, their dreams. And I'm like, you know what, let's do this together. And we started yeah. to work together at every stage. It feels like, ah, Misty, this happened. Misty, I just clocked 20K followers. Misty, uh -huh. I just clocked 100K followers. Mama, where are you? I want to show you something. Like, it was just very heartwarming for me and just very great to see that their dreams were actually valid. So at, at every stage, it made me realize that I actually enjoyed doing it. Trust me, it was out of my job description. Mm. That was not what I was paid to do. I just saw myself going extra mile yeah. for these people. And it's not only Nigerians. I've managed creators in sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm I'm focusing on um, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa. I mean, on other, other parts of sub-Saharan Africa. So... Yeah. Watching these people, like it started to connect. I started to learn people's culture. Um, I would always ask, oh, what's this in your language? What's this in your language? Oh, in Nigerians, this is how we act. <laughs> Kenyans, this is how we act. Like I, I started to find joy in it. And um, I think 2021, if if I'm correct, yeah, I think 2021, I'm like after the lockdown. Yeah, yeah I remember that's 2021 after the lockdown. I just said it very clear in my spirit. I'm like, you know what? You are called to do this. So at that point, it wasn't because of a job anymore. It mm -hmm. wasn't because I was paid a salary. I just knew that I find the most fulfillment helping people become better. 
And the great platform that that gave me was talents management. So I'm like, you know what? I was already doing mentorships already. I was giving back already. I I, I was already speaking with people's parents. Like they were more responsive. Families were handing their kids over to me. It it, it went beyond the job and it became something I was passionate about. And yeah. I started to take it serious. That's so <laughs> lovely. I think it just, you know, when you see people succeeding and you actually play the part in it, it just so gives you much that joy. Yeah. Like so much joy. Like imagine someone on stage I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> God. That is yeah. so lovely, honestly. Thank you. But okay, for me, usually I like to Okay, let me just start with this. Do you believe that the environment we grew up in plays a major role in shaping who we become? Yes, I agree. hundred percent. The environment that's even as an individual, um, there are a lot of things and that's what I also teach people. Yeah. Your circumstance, your background, your family, your environment, your society, where you live contributes majorly to what you become. Mm. But when you become of age where you have a brain and you, you are aware, let me say that, when you become aware of who you are, yeah. then you begin to learn, unlearn, and relearn some things, right? So at that point, I would not make excuse for people and say, oh, because you grew up here, or oh, because you were in this environment, because now you are aware of your circumstances, yeah, yeah. you are aware of your life, it's time to take charge of your life. Because I did it, I teach it, and I see people do it every day. I was not born with a silver spoon, mm. but I was determined that you see where big people are, where rich people are, <laughs> meet her with there. They yeah. all have to end. So I started <laughs> to energy. work. I yeah. started to, what are they doing? I'm not doing. What are they learning? They are not learning. Mm. I started to find out. It was so bad that when my mom, because my mom also is of that school of thoughts, when she says something nice about one woman or somebody, I'll go and find ah, First thing I'll tell my kilo car. Like, what did she read? Like, is it book they are reading? I can read the book. Because I was very brilliant. Yeah. That's why I was, I was very brilliant. I was the best graduating student of my, of, in my class. So I was wow. very brilliant. I wanted to, if it's this course they are reading that is making them successful, I can read it too. Yeah. I don't mind. I was very curious. I was very determined. I wanted to succeed at all costs. I mean, going the right path. So yeah. every time I hear a good story, I'll find out. What I, okay, yes, this one is a rich from a rich room. I'm not from a rich room. That's fine. One zero. Mm. You win me one zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out what else did you do. So I started to speak, even in making friends, mm. I, it was intentional for me to not allow my background to determine who I would become. Yes. So I was very intentional about my work ethics, the way I speak, the way I carry myself, the way I relate with people, everything that would be um, every requirement of a successful person. I started to pick it mm. one by one, learn, ask people, teach, learn, serve. And yeah, that's it. That's interesting. <laughs> I love how you think and your mentality and approach towards this thing. So how would you describe your childhood? Hey, <laughs> I think my childhood was um, grass to grace, come back again. But I don't know if you have said it came back to grass. Oh my God, no. It was just very, I used to give a child that, okay. I grew up actually in Alimosho local government. I, I grew I. I was born, bred, butter, teed in that local government. And when I left the country, I came back. I said, no, I'm getting out of this local government. I'm not doing this again. If it's a course, like, like, it's me. I'm like, why? But yeah, my childhood was pretty much interesting. I don't think anyone's really asked me about my childhood, though. No, honestly, I feel like it's... I like to ask that question. Yeah. Because, you know, it kind of, like, gives you a perspective into how your journey initially started. Yeah. yeah. I, I started okay. My... with Like I said, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. But yeah. we're okay. Mm-hmm. My parents did their best to do their best. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Now that I'm older, I can see that they tried their best. Yes. I can't fault them for anything. The school that I went to was not a bad school. It trained me in knowing how to spell, made me a smart child. So it wasn't like the most expensive school in the area, yeah. but quality, 
it was good, right? I knew my mom used to walk on the island. She would drive. She would, I, I, because I, I'm also the first child and the only girl. Oh. So my childhood, I, why I'm struggling is because I grew up fast, mm. right? So I didn't have like, um, the child who wear, I was wearing pink as a girl. They were buying me dolls. <laughs> I was a child that I'm going to work, take care of your siblings. There's food in the freezer, microwave it. Mm-hmm. Like, I was the mommy. Yeah. So I grew up very fast. Also, um, um, th- tables turned. So I had to like leave the school I was in. We had already built like relationships with people. It was like a top school in my area. We could not afford it anymore. So I had to leave, go to another school. We realized that ah, that condition make red fish bend. Though. We can't have a year school. Is this what I told my mom again? She took me out of it. So I went like three secondary schools. And that's why I knew a lot of people. Oh, really? <laughs> I went to different <laughs> secondary schools. I, 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 I just remember that. After church, we used to go to Mr. Biggs to eat or every Sunday. Oh, I think we did yeah, that Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> also, my dad didn't live with us, right? Mm-hmm. So he was working outside Lagos. So he used to come on Fridays, go back on Sundays. I remember that. So I literally grew up with my mom. And my mom was literally fending for the family and doing... So she was the one I knew. Yeah. I remember in SS... I think SS1 or SS2 when um, my dad left his job and he came back home and I woke up one morning, I'm like, why are you still in this house? What are you doing? I'm not going anywhere. I just at home. And my mom was like, ah, no, like, he now stays with us. I'm like, okay. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the family. But I mean, I pretty much grew up with my mom yeah. that was a struggling entrepreneur, making sure if she doesn't work, there's no food. Mm. So I had to grow up on my own. I had to grow up fast. I had to grow up to take care of my siblings. I had to make sure that everything was in check. So yeah, that was literally my childhood till I took my life. Yeah, and you're doing amazing (laughs) right now. I mean, you look good. (laughs) I, I know that being a first daughter comes with that responsibility yeah, and it's like not hypo. It's pressure. The truth. Like the pressure is very serious because I, I I am a firstborn as well. Oh, nice. yeah, <laughs> gang, 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 gang. <laughs> so I can totally relate when you say you know you had to grow up fast because yeah. you have other people looking up to you. You have siblings and all of that. So like, how were you able to manage the pressure that comes with being the first daughter? I'm still managing it because yeah. I'm still on that journey. Yeah. So um, I've always been a child that has a mind of our own. If you ask my parents, we fought. My childhood was fight, fight, fight <laughs> with my parents, especially my mom. She not grieve for me, so I don't grieve for her. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> now we are best friends. Growing up, we used to be enemies. I think that's, that's the... Because I, I had a mind of my own. I was a child that... I was only interested in book. Don't come into wash plates. Don't come into sweep any floor. I remember my mom would say, of course, uh, Nigerian parents or my Nigerian moms, they'd be like, ah, is this what you want to do in your husband's house? I say, when I make enough money, I will pay somebody to cook for him. Thank I'll you. Pay somebody to. So, and the thing used to piss her off so much. <laughs> you don't know, you're so lazy. You can't do anything. And I used to tell her that, all these things, first, I thought it was in, inborn. I might be wrong, I might be right. I think it's a natural thing for women to be domestic, mm. right? So I was more interested in reading my book growing up. I felt like it was a gateway to become a successful person. Then when I become successful and make all the money in the world, I was going to pay. I used to watch films. <laughs> I saw chefs. I me, I, I mean... always wanted soft life, <laughs> even when I know I have silver spoon. So my mom and I used to fight and fight, and I grew up with maids. Mm. So I think the disconnect was at the t- by the time my mom realized that ah, omoyiti baje, I've already grown up. <laughs> Because when I grew up, I had mates attending to yeah. me, holding my lunchbox. And the mates were actually working in our factory. But they slept uh, in yeah. our house. So I didn't used to sweep. I didn't used to do anything. My own is wake, wake up. up. So when the mates started to go with her to the factory, then it was just me and my brother. Mm-hmm. So I now started to get into that position to be their mom and all of that. So we used to fight growing up with my mom. I had a mind of my own. The kind of friends I wanted... 
I was so, <laughs> let me say, I was classes that I didn't relate with poor people. Oh my God. I don't, <laughs> I always tell myself. Is there that, your, your, I always say, I'm not rich. From a I young need to age. look up, not that, look down. <laughs> So I, I was that intentional I about that. I actually love that. Reading. I, I, like I said, now I know better. But mm-hmm. at that time, the only thing I saw was this book is my gateway to success. Yeah. So I used to read. I did, I was not a child that they got lesson teacher for or had a mm-hmm. problem. Open day like this. Oh, me, Tenny. <laughs> everybody liked my mom. I was always the star of the class. Yeah. Even my teacher, I was everybody's pride. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be my teacher. Everybody wanted to meet my mom. My mom also fashionista. When she comes, <laughs> she'll just swing that uh, darling yaki. <laughs> but yeah, that's what my growing up was. But I was very intentional about the person I wanted to become. Like I said, I'm not surprised that all this is happening. Mm. I'm just sometimes shocked that, oh, it happened faster than I expected. Yeah. But yeah, it was intentional. That's amazing. <laughs> Honestly, I love that you started building your circle yeah. from a very young age. Like, that is so... I feel like people need to learn how to like have that mentality especially nigerians need to have that mentality that i need to succeed i can't just be comfortable it in was my important for comfort me to take my family out yeah. of where they were so every decision i was making and like i said it wasn't from a demeaning point of view like now I get that now yeah. seeing it like i can look back and now see the story mm. at that time it was just a resilient girl that i look hmm, i wanted to make this <laughs> girl their family is not like my family. Like they are. Yeah, well she has to... a bit of connect. So I accept your friendship. And and, that, and that's the <laughs> that's the country we live in in Nigeria. If you do not know people that know people that I have connections, knew that there was no people to <laughs> some except I wanted to leave the country, but to yeah. succeed in. <laughs> I was wise enough to like learn from my dad. I mean, your mama now from his conversation. I was just picking, 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 picking things and started to get intentional about my life. I love that. (laughs) To be honest, (laughs) it's amazing. Okay, so when you look back at where you started on your journey, what experiences or what moments do you think shaped you the most to be who you are today? 2017. Mm. I was in China. (sighs) I was very lonely. I was at the verge of giving up. The people I called friends, they switched their back. The person that was supposed to be my roommate started to act mad. Uh-uh. And everything was just like, the person that used to look like, ah, ah my guy now, he focused on his relationship. Oh. Left me alone. So <laughs> <laughs> I think 2017 was a defining moment in my life as a human being, not like 360. Mm -hmm. Like I said, 2021 was for my career. 2017 was a determining factor. I had to accept, I grew up very insecure. I didn't like how I talk. I felt like "Ah, I talk with my tongue. I'm too tall. My teeth is dead. Ah, Everything. I didn't like anything about me. But 2017, I just sat down. I said, you know what? There's nothing you can do about it. I started to accept my flaws. I was I I, I laugh loud. I'm loud. I talk loud. Like, you know, when you list out all the insults that you received mm. and all your weaknesses or insecurities, I just listed it and I'm like, you know what? Can you do anything about your eyes? No. Check. Can you do anything about how you laugh? No. Check. Can you do anything? I just started to list everything wow. down. Like, you know what? There's nothing I can do about this. This is what makes me me, mm. right? This is why Tenny is different from Olivia. Olivia is different. Like, this is what makes us different. And that's fine. I grew up in a toxic space where, like, that's why I struggle with my childhood because nothing really sucked like that. Mm. <laughs> but I grew up in a toxic, toxic space where I was too much. I was always too much for everybody, every space. It felt like I was trying to always fit in. And also, like, the only girl, I didn't have sisters. So I didn't have sisters. The people that were friends were the ones I was forcing to be my sisters by force. I I remember my best friend then. If my mom buys something for me, I will not use it or wear it if it was not in shoes. Because when I get to school the next day, I needed to give Betsy. I wanted also a twin. Oh, when you're coming to lesson, wear pink, I wear pink, wear J. Like, I always wanted validation. You were that girl. I was that girl yeah. that wanted sisterhood by force. Oh. So, I, but that ruined me, right? So, 2017 was the day I just said, you know what? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing you can do about this. This is what makes you you. I just accepted everything. And I just picked myself and I said, even if I'm the last person standing, my support should be enough for my for me. So I just told myself I would go through life. Like, I, I, 2017 was the year where I just told myself, you know, it's just you, yourself, and your God. So I just told myself, you know what? Let me bank on myself. Let me bet on myself. I'll do this with God. Like I said, my family was in Nigeria. I, I didn't have the best of relationships with my, my mom or my parents or my family. It was just a lot of issues back home. I used to run from home. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? 2017, I picked myself. I was determined to make it the right way because I saw other oh, yeah. ways. I love that you keep saying the right way. The right way, way because yes. I had opportunities. Yes. Leaving the country. I mean, when I was I was on my guest inside when I was in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. So I felt like that's why my parents had so much control of me mm-hmm. and all of that. But leaving everybody to live in a foreign land where they don't even speak English. <sighs> and I was presented with a lot of... Of that must have been order. very hard. Yeah, I was presented with a lot of other ways. So that's why I always tell my parents then, it's not like I don't know what to do. I actually know. I was that exposed, yeah. right? I saw what my other classmates were doing. I saw what other people were doing. I saw what Nigerians were doing. I had a choice, but I chose this part. Yeah. And I was ready to bank on myself and make it work. It was important for me to make it work, to show other people that this actually pays yeah so that was also my driving force that you know what i will go through this route and let me say it through at least i know that i'm smart i i know how to speak to people i enter any room and i know i bring value to the table so mm-hmm. let me bank on myself and yeah i did that but the start was very difficult but 2017 was the defining moment in my life and i'm so grateful that i sat with myself I, of course, if I want to think critically, I'm sure it was influenced by maybe some quotes, some, some things I saw, some people I heard speak, but 2017, I sat with myself and I started to bank on myself. Your story is so relatable because as a young girl growing up, it's very easy to listen to what everybody's saying mm-hmm. about you, how they're describing you, oh, you're this, you're that. Because I know for myself, growing up, I also hated being tall. I hated, <laughs> because like, you walk in and everybody's like, oh, go to the back, you're go, very tall. When you go, to, when I want to queue, go, <laughs> go to the, tally. Thank you. I used to like to stay <laughs> in the front. Tally, go oh to the back. Oh my God. And I like staying in the front, even till today. Tally, thank you. I like till staying in the front. Today, if you go anywhere, <laughs> they also know that the front seat is for me still. I, and even when I was in uni, yeah. my seat is in front. When I go to church, I sit behind the pastor. Anywhere that I am, I look at the front. I first go to the front when there's no seat in front. But imagine growing up, Tolly, go judge, that's a ton. And you know our kids now? Yeah, they, say it's such they can a be so mean. mean. And then my, my, my name is Peace, right? So then they will say Peace. Like, peace, I want to go and peace. Oh, <laughs> I hated my name because of it. I, I hated so many things about myself. But like you said, it's very important that you come to, you know, reality and, you know, speak to yourself. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you just need to sit down with yourself and just tell yourself, like, there's nothing you can do nothing. to change this. So why not just embrace it and, you know, own it? And that's what... I did, and I'm sure you did that too. Yeah, I did it too. <laughs> so to anybody out there that's feeling like, oh, I'm not enough, I'm I'm too much, or I'm not enough, or I don't like ah, something about me. I was too me. much. But now, everything <laughs> that people complained about me being too much, everything, when I mean everything, every single thing that people had an issue with about me being too much is what changed my life, is what gave me the job that I have, is what gave me a listening ear in the rooms I entered, mm. is what gave me a seat at the table. So I'm, I always encourage everybody, do you, honestly, it sounds cliche, as long as you are not hurting somebody else yeah. and you're not going against the will of God, trust me, bank on yourself. I did that. And if I listen to people then when they say, ah, now wow, you you just be snapping picture every day. Yeah. I never knew there was anything like social media influencing because that was the portfolio that I had to yeah. present to brands to mm. say, oh, I can do this. If I wasn't outspoken, if I didn't try hosting shows like I used to do on Trending by Tenny, 
the company that wanted to hire me would not see me as a good fit for a creator mm-hmm. manager for Nigeria. Yeah. If I wasn't expressive, that they were calling loud. So I realized that when people say you are too much, you are in the wrong space. Mm. All you need to do is remove yourself from that space. Because I started to meet new people after 2019, and they liked me. Because it's like you're bubbly yeah, and it's like, a good thing. It, it, when I enter into a space, yeah. my energy is so contagious that pe- when I was in China, uh, I can't remember exact name. She used to pay me to come spend time with her. She's she's a white woman. Really? Yes. It was part of my also wow. in the China. <laughs> Because this woman is, she's a white woman. She's old. She doesn't have, she has kids, but they were scattered around. You know how white people used to think? She would buy food for me. She would give me money. She would book spa for me. She would book anything I want with my friends. Just so you keep her company. Just to keep her company. This is the same girl that people would say, ah, you... (laughs) <laughs> Pepper body. <laughs> this is what somebody was. Yeah, imagine you me to them be around. You know. ah. In that moment, I say the lie. I'm not too much. If people is paining you, I do too much more. Most times, it's just jealousy. Yeah, you know, so because everything, like I said, everything that's too tall. They said I was too tall. I got a job when I was in China, where I was paid per hour, if a clothing company to try out outfits for tall girls. Ooh. And they were paying me every hour. This is the same girl that they said was too tall. And I was making money from being too tall. They said I was too skinny. I went to look for a job. I say, I'm a mode. I shake my body. <laughs> they paid me because I look like a mode. So they believed yeah. me. I was too skinny for some people. But they paid me to be a model somewhere. Uh, I talk too much. I taught Chinese kids... Um, Nigerian language, Nigerian dance. When I was in China, I remember the money from that job is what I used to buy my first iPhone 6. Oh, wow. They, everybody always has something to say about you. But like I said, take charge of your life. Yeah. Tony, as long as you are not hurting anyone or going against the will of God. Yeah. Continue, Jerry. I love that. <laughs> Wow. So, I mean, you did all of that in China. Yeah, I asked to learn. That's, I asked to that's like incredible. Uh, I did a lot of your things. Your story is very inspiring. <laughs> and I hope young girls listening to this and watching this would you know, take some things that's why, out that's of that. Why, that's why I came on, on this. Because yeah. like I tell my talents, I, I feel there's a disconnect in the society. And this is the disconnect. Okay. A lot of young people, the people they see that is accessible to them are people that are either making money the wrong way or girls that are not doing the right things. Mm. So when you bring stories of Chima Amanda, Okonji Owela, these are grandparents, gr- grandmothers. It feels like impossible. It feels like generations apart because they are not seeing people that are accessible, that are doing what you are telling them to mm. do. I remember one of my talents when she came to my house and every time she just used to call me, mama, are you around? She just used to engage me. At that time, I didn't know until one day I was like, hmm, I see what you're doing there. She used to engage me and she would just say, I've seen your journey. Like, I literally see you move. And every achievement that you have, I watch you grow there. I watch you walk into it. I watch you put in the work. Yeah. So when you tell me something, it's believable. Because I actually watch you achieve all these things. And that was when I realized that that is the disconnect. A lot of people don't have access to let me say younger people that are doing great mm, things. Yes, because you know, I'm so media, sorry to cut yeah. you off. I'm so sorry. But like, you're right. They don't see young people that are actually succeeding and doing like how you mentioned Okonji, Riala and it's Chimamanda. Yeah, like, it's, ah, it feels like people. At, it's that time, Joe. It's not yeah. anymore. But even people doing the right thing. That's why I'm very excited when I see people like minds or see young people doing great things. It feels like, please, Tell your story. Because, of course, I was running away from podcasts and all of this for a very long time. But I realized that it was important for people to hear me. And, like, it was important for people to see that I've actually also been through the valley of the shadow. Sometimes I'm even going through it currently. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean that everything, or I have so much money, or I'm doing great things. But 
the basic things in life, I think I've, I've fixed that. Yeah. And this is how I did that. So even for people that I mentor and people that watch me, like I always say, let my life be a reminder that it is possible. Because there's a disconnect with, oh, the, and the media doesn't also help. What we celebrate, <sighs> we celebrate the wrong thing. Yeah. So people think like, oh, that's the only way that is, or oh, that's the only way that is. I can't also blame them. So we need people that are, uh, young people, let me say young people because I'm also very young. Young people that are doing good things, great things. We need more spotlights on these people so that other people can see that it is possible. Yeah, I feel you. I can totally relate to that. Okay, your work involves, you know, empowering others to tell their story, to yeah. share their story. But what's your story? How do you balance, you know, the demands of managing talents and strategies with also focusing on achieving your own personal goals? Balance is what I would say. And also, it's intertwined, mm. right? If you're telling their story, that's my story also. Really? Yeah, because when um, someone is out there, speaking about their journey and I'm a major part of that journey. Of course, that is also my story. Yeah. So I'm not focusing about me. I'm not focusing on me. I'm focusing on my products. Let me put it for lack of a better word. I'm focusing on people achieving their dream. I'm not trying to find fame. I'm not trying to find the spotlight. I'm not trying to be a celebrity. If you want to be a celebrity, go wow really? when you get yeah when you get the center stage i'll be behind rooting for you and cheering you on and making sure like i say i'm constantly shining as light so that people can see and walk clear paths because i exist that's my mantra wow so i'm telling my story through them telling their story so it's not a and it's balance i do my thing they do their thing we work together I get fulfillment from them getting fulfilled. My happiness is them being happy. So it's intertwined at the end of the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that because I was going to ask, you know, you the talents that you manage, they end up going into the spotlight. Like, how do you, you as the architect of success, if I can call you that, like, and you're not, you know, in public attention, people do not, you're not the center of public attention. I don't know if you understand that question. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Because like I said, it's a calling for me. So I, it's not about the fame. It's not. Or Be, popularity. At the end of the day, it doesn't mean that when they become famous, they stay with me. They can become famous and move somewhere else okay. and say, oh, they no longer want to work with me or they are not interested in the things that I have to offer. It's fine. That's why my validation doesn't come from people right? If it's coming from people, I'll be heartbroken. Does it hurt when they move on? Yes, it does. Yeah. But I'm not dwelling on that because I am answering a calling. I am fulfilling a purpose. And that is what is most important to me. Even if you don't go out there or the spotlight or when you have the spotlight, you don't say, oh, I like to thank Miss Tenny. Yeah. I like, it's fine. I see it even now. I see some of my talents go on podcast and they say, nye, 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 nye. I just look there and be like, <laughs> even you. But that's where it ends. I don't take it more than that because human beings will always be human beings. Yeah. It's why I'm not seeking validation from them. If you praise me, fine. If you, Because most of the times we fight more than we like, actually play. Because um, as a leader, I'm pushing you into places that you cannot see. Right? Yeah. So you in it might not have the full picture. I'm the one outside the box. So I can, I have an overview of the picture. Yeah. So we fight more than the good times because I'm constantly pushing. I'm constantly pressing. I'm constantly making sure they are going beyond their limits. Right. At the end of the day, if you appreciate it, oh, thanks be to God. If you don't appreciate it, still thanks be to God because I didn't do it for you. With or without you, whoever occupies that position will still benefit the same thing from me. Mm. So it's not about the person in yeah. the position. It's about the position. Like I say, I make sure that I create platforms for people to express themselves and to achieve their dreams. If you want, when you achieve your own, you go. I wish you all the best. Because again, there's an higher purpose and higher calling that I'm answering. And that's what's important for me. As long as I'm okay, I've done my best. I've done right by everything. Yeah. All the best. I love that. Not seeking validation from anybody nah. around you. And that's something I struggle with. 
I feel like that's something a lot of people struggle with because, you know, you seek to, oh, tell me that I'm doing good. Tell me, I want to hear that I I'm know, doing good. That's why I say. Like, I, I, I'm I the table. To something, like. I bring so much value to yeah. every table. I know I'm very confident in what I carry. I'm very confident. I can see that. I mean, yeah. it's literally, it's, it's, it's beaming <laughs> from you. Like, I can see yeah, that I'm light very confident and that star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure we'll have another session where we talk about how I built this confidence because mm. I struggled. From my story, you can tell that yes. from a girl seeking validation to becoming confident, it took a journey, it's a journey right? Yeah. So i very confident in the grace that I carry. I'm not ordinary. And it's not trying to be spiritual, but I know that I was called to, like I said, 2021, I realized that I was called to a higher purpose. So if I'm not, even if you say, oh, thank you so much. I love you so much. Oh, nice and sweet. Because the same person that says, I love you so much will say tomorrow that I hate that woman. She's too bossy. She's too proud. That's human being yeah, that's for just humans, you. Yeah. That's humans. So if you put your your if you get validation from them it's good when they appreciate you mm. it's good when they give back is i feel great like i said i'm also a human being yeah. of course i would i would accept that i'll pay attention to that people that are giving returning the same energy by default i will be drawn to them because i'm a human being yeah. but in the real sense i'm just doing what i want to do when we all get back to heaven, I see you, we see each other, we wave. I've done my part, you've done your part, yeah. and that's what matters. I love that. Interesting. So I imagine your role at TikTok must come with, you know, a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. How do you handle those high stakes period? And how do you, you know, make yourself and put yourself grounded in your purpose? Like I said, it's intertwined. It's a job. Doing what I'm paid to do, get out. It comes with, like, it doesn't... How do you deal with the pressure that comes with it? Because I know it of should course, be... there's pressure because people know. So people expect you to do magic. People expect <laughs> uh, you to press one thing and everywhere will be viral. Yeah, people, okay. There's just unnecessary expectations. But for people that I give access to me, they understand... When it's a tiny conversation, they understand when it's this conversation, they go through the right channels. I know when I'm not supposed to be in the conversation. I just know I, I'm very authentic. I stay true to myself. If I can do it, I will do it. If I can try and put in word for you, I'll try. Yeah. If it's something I can't do, I can't do. But I'm more interested in tiny as a person, as a brand, as everything that I'm doing than that. Okay, I love that. Okay, can you share a personal or professional challenges that you know you went through early on in your career and how did you overcome it? Mm. Richie, I think scouting. Scouting? Yeah, for talents because... Mm. Um, when I started, I of course, now you would know me one way or the other. But when I started, when nobody knew me, of course, we live in Nigeria that was very, that is, I want to say was, I remember I is very classist, <laughs> where if you're not wearing designer shoes, designer bags, you're not driving one iron car, people Your just feel like, nice. ah, nothing is up for her now. She's not popping. So that was what I experienced. I, I get people respond to my DS today and say, Oh, sorry, Ma, I missed your message. Since 2019, I send you message. For real? You will respond to my message in 2023. You know one thing about me? Keep the same energy. energy. Go I back mean... there. For those that believe, we fly together. You did not believe because I'm not popular. I'm not chilling with your yeah. faves. I'm not wearing designer design. But now... In God's time, it makes all things beautiful. Everything we are doing now. But those that believe, <laughs> and I'm very big on loyalty, those that believed in what I was building, trust yeah. me, they are ripping from, from it now. Okay. Yeah, that's so funny. I mean, the person came. Out. I'm telling you, till last month, someone is replying my message from 2021. When I say, hi, my name is this. This is what I do. Yeah. I'm trying to scout for talent. I see that you are doing amazing. But those that believe, we Just are Just keep that same energy, you know? <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> keep the same energy. Or when I walk into a room, uh, you don't know me. You are trying to be me. Yeah. And, for you me. know, giving <gasps> the energy it's of... So rampant in Lagos. Who like, is she? Oh, my God. Then you finally find out who I am. I like... 
<laughs> and I'm like, I keep the same energy at the back. I give people the same energy because it will not cost you anything to be To be nice kind, to anyone. To I, be, mean, I don't need to know you to say good evening, good afternoon, and keep it moving. I don't need to know your bank accounts or know who it's, you are it's literally to just be kind. Basic but manners. people want to. Yeah. yeah, it's basic manners. People just want to see you as a celeb or mm. see you as something. And I like my, my job. If you don't know me, you don't know me, and yeah. that's fine. I won't either expect, um, like I said, the spotlight is not on me. If either I'm here because of a talent or I'm trying to close a deal or something, so I'm not the celeb. Mm. So when you treat me like mm, she doesn't matter, then you not realize that I matter in the room <laughs> and you're trying to be nice to me now. Nah, keep the same energy. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so who would you say were your biggest mentors when you started your career? Hmm. Mm mentors so i n- never had one you never had one no never i never had any mentor i just i just had people in my journey that i did not want to be like okay so i had people that i d- never wanted to be like you, that you don't want to be like them yes because i experienced them and it's either they were mean to me oh, yeah. they were they were just not nice to me so I made sure that when I started to, when I started my journey, I saw that, no, I don't want to be like this woman. I don't want to be like this man. So I wanted to do better than what they, were, than doing. What they yeah. were doing. So I didn't really have, like I said, I'm, I'm the first child. Um, my parents were first ch- children, like first um, children too from both parts. Yeah. So I didn't have cousins or auntie. I didn't have any blueprints. Really, it why, was, why do I feel like I can't? Yeah, I didn't have, I didn't have any, hard, like, any, to you. any blueprints. Oh, wow. I became the blueprints. I was just blessed with people on my journey that believed in me. That's what, so I didn't have anyone saying, Do this, do yeah. that. I had people that would say, Ah, woman, you're buru. I should not be wicked. Oh, this woman didn't give me. Um, a seat at the table. When I get into that room, I'll bring somebody in. So I had people that I didn't want to be like, because people were very mean when I started. But like I said, I didn't want, I don't focus on that because as much as people were mean to me in my journey, I was blessed with people at every stage in my life that um, gave me an helping hand that helped me in one way or the other. That that help was what I needed for the next stage of my life. So, which I'm always very thankful for. So I didn't have mentors. I just had people that I looked up to, not look up to, I just like people that, mm, nice, I should I should emulate this. For some people, oh, it was the way they, the way they were dressing. For some people, it's the way they speak. Some people, is the presence they commanded. Mm. Like, they enter a room and everyone's like, ah, <laughs> boss. I'm like, ah, one day we say I'll be a big woman, you know? Those were just things I was yeah. picking from people. But I didn't have any mentor that was guiding me. It was just me and my God and my... Guts and audacity. <laughs> <laughs> that audacity is very important. I had it. Too. I had it. You don't give me a seat at the table. That's fine. Yeah. I just left. I went to build my own table, built yeah. my chairs, even built chairs for other people to oh. come and sit at my table. That's why when I'm <laughs> flying or I have convoy, I have many disciples. Oh, they are behind me. We gather. <laughs> That is so nice. That is so nice. So what would you say it is important for a creator to have a mentor or someone guiding them? Is it like an important thing that they should consider? It is important, but some people are not fortunate enough. Like me, I wasn't fortunate to... It's not like I had and I said, no, I don't Mm, want... Yeah. Like I said, circumstance of life, your environment and many things contribute to that. Some people never have opportunity to have... um, close access to mentors mm. some people never do like someone like me that i never got that opportunity but now i'm mentoring a lot of people um it's important for people to learn and also even someone you consider as a mentor give them grace they are human beings yeah. right so don't just take everything 360 take the good one like i always tell people nobody is perfect as long as somebody's good outweighs the bad they are good people. Yeah. Your brother will say, in your kindaton, somebody is good finish. <laughs> so you, you want the person's good outweighs the bad. Give the person grace because the times that you see the bad side of the person, 
look away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what makes them human. That's yeah. what makes us not good. I mean, you can't be perfect. Yes, you can't be perfect. So if you have access to a mentor, take advantage of the um, opportunity and serve. What I did growing up, I served people. In serving, I found clarity. In serving people, I found purpose. In serving people, I picked things I wanted to be and things I didn't want to be. In serving people, I positioned myself to receive. Mm. I positioned myself to give. I gave of myself. Like I said, I didn't have money, but my time, I would serve. And it was not from a demeaning place. It's not like... I was doing it to get something. I enjoyed being valuable mm. to people. So the only way I could be valuable to people was serving. Help me bring this. Help me call this. Every Everything to be useful. That when I leave, the person will say, ah, if Tenny was here now, oh. this thing would have been... So I made sure that people I didn't have... Um, people, like big people that I didn't have anything to give and make sure I gave myself Mm. to be someone valuable that they needed so that they they didn't forget me. And also when opportunities came, I was easy to be remembered out of the crowd because you're like, ah, that's true because you put in so much effort effort in being valuable. Silver and gold, I have none, but myself, I give to you. (laughs) I love that. Honestly, I love how passionate you are. Like you can literally tell as you're speaking that you're very passionate yes, about what you do. Yeah. And I love that. Thank you. <laughs> so as a leader in a fast paced industry, like, you know, like this, do you ever face imposter syndrome? Yes. So ah, I do, boy, we hide. I will show it. Okay. I do. And that's why I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the people in my, in my space. I have two friends that when I struggle, things get difficult. I'll just call, call her, I'll call him and be like, just give me like ginger again. Like, uh, uh-uh. uh, you know, something my friend says, shout out to L. I will say, now you with a look or tell me, Aww. now you with a look, <laughs> if you give up all of us, now you with, so every time I hear it in my head, like I can't afford to give up. Like, so even when I'm not sure, mm. I call, call my friend OJ. I'm like, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. What do you think? Because he's also more experienced than me. He also sees me. Remember, I'm the one in the picture. For people that see me outside the picture, it's easier for them to say, oh, I know you very yeah. well, my friend. Do this, do that. Or if when I have imposter syndrome, you're like... <laughs> We we'll move past it. By the time they send me banana bread and ice cream, <laughs> I'll, I'll be okay. I'll get on track again. But yeah, I'm a human being. I yeah. struggle with that. I want to enter a room. I'm like, hey, am I qualified? Yeah. Is it my type they are looking for there? Like I don't have Forbes. I don't have things to do. But at the end of the day, I realized, like I said, the confidence I have is I carry so much grace and value. If you relate with me, if you do business with me, if you work with me, if you have me in this space, yeah. I don't think you'll regret it. So that alone gives me confidence to keep going. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people go through this. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Very, it happens to the best of and us. And it brings down a lot of people's confidence because, like, you know, this self-doubt is so easy for you to just creep in into your mind and just overshadow everything. Like, That's the am I good enough? Of am, a I, human being. am I, do I fit in? Like, yeah. you know, those questions that you start asking yourself. And I feel like that kind of limits a lot of people, you know, from doing what they actually want to do. Very, very true. Once you know you have you have core you have a core you know the basics like i know the basic thing that forms me mm. i've found confidence in that and i've been able to surround myself with people that know me behind the glitz and the glam people that know my weaknesses know my strength know my fears ah I'm scared of poverty. I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm also scared to fail. People that know yeah. my reason, right? Two, three of them, right? I, it, it makes me, when I struggle, I want to start to doubt myself. You know, those are the people that will lift me back up. And also pray about it. Sometimes worship session, pray session, kick the devil out. It's yeah. just lying. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> kick that devil out. <laughs> So how do you think your role as a talent manager has helped you, you know, grow personally, your growth? Wow. It has helped me so much. 
I've I've grown. Even when I look at myself in the last two, three, four, five years, I've grown. I've become more confident in myself. Um, I've become very sure of who I am. I've found clarity on my journey. I know what I want. I'm not the girl that you can say white is black, black is white. I'm very sure what I'm doing. I'm sure of... Talent management has also helped me personally in my life because I know that I'm constantly under the microscope. People are watching. People are looking. And it's not from a place of pressure. It's from a place of I'm doing what I'm saying. So when I tell you to do it, it's because I'm also doing it. Yeah. I'm not telling you what I've not done. I'm not telling you what's not possible. So I'm also growing. And I let people know that I'm growing. As much as you see me as, oh, mama, or I'm also growing. Mm-hmm. I will make mistakes and tell you, ah, I've done this thing, no. Or I know somebody. I always know somebody. If it's not <laughs> me, I because I have yeah. friends that are also very ex. Well, like I have a lot of friends that are way older than I am. So I learn also from their experiences and teach other people and teach myself. So talent management has, has made me to see that when I say it is possible, I mean it with everything in me. It is actually possible. It is possible for someone to go from zero to hundred. Yeah. It is possible for people's dream to come alive. It is possible for people's background or environment not to limit them. I've seen people grow in leaps and bounds. I've seen people achieve. Yeah. Like talent management has also helped me to be cautious of of life. It's just a split second. I have many talents that have died also. Oh so I've seen people in this journey also lose their life. I've seen people go from <laughs> zero to hundred and come back to zero. So it has, it has exposed me to see life in its truest form, to see that life is very fickle, to see that we are on a journey. That's why I always say that I am only playing my part. You are the talent. I'm only playing my part by mm-hmm. amplifying the talents that God has given you. So that's my work. That's why I'm not trying to take the spotlight or take credit. Every time I achieve something great, like I did today, I got an, a very amazing news this morning. The first thing I say is thank you, Jesus. Because I remind myself that it is not my power. Yeah. You know, I'm just a vessel. I'm just an angel that somebody that God has put in people's life. So talent management has really molded me. It has shaped me. Like I said, it's beyond the money. It's beyond the business. It's, it's fulfilling for me that... God has given me this much responsibility, not one, not two, not 10, not 20. So many people are depending on me. So I can't afford to fail because if I do, ah, a lot of people. So I'm constantly on track. I'm constantly looking for the next great thing. I'm constantly plugging, reading, learning, pushing, fighting. Ah, and that's made me a better person. It has... (laughs) I love yeah <laughs> honestly I'm just in child I'm, I'm just staring I'm like wow I love it I love I love everything that you said yeah it's so important I love that mm-hmm. thank you <sighs> so how have you navigated your journey you know as an African woman in the entertainment and tech space I, I feel like it is male dominant yeah yeah how have you navigated your journey yeah first bringing value to the table and secondly, having discipline. That's what I would say. Um, so before I entered this space, or even when I started, like I learned on the job, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I made sure that I was learning how to bring value to the table. So when I speak, it carries with, because I'm not speaking because I don't know what to say or because I just like to talk. I'm speaking because I know what I'm saying. So when I when in this space, I've been able to build myself as a person of value, one, and secondly, be disciplined. I'm not that um, lady that, uh, no, give us more time to be, yes, I'm not that person. I, I When I started, they used to call me my great toucher. Now I'm even more, For real? I'm serious. <laughs> even my talents say, like my new talents that I onboard and all, yeah. like when the old ones tell them, say, ah, you are very lucky. Oh. Wow. You did not meet the mystery that we knew. Because like I said, I used to be very, very, I, I'm still firm, but you can't... How do you call me at past eight? It's not possible know, now. Yeah. You can't reach me. Mm, that's not so, professional. So, like, 
I put a lot of things also in place. When I started working, I don't meet people in their homes. I don't even do physical meetings. Mm. I kept it strictly on off, offline. I'm sorry, strictly online. Because for me, it was a way to protect myself from pressure. I would do meeting now. You say, ah, my shoe is not Gucci. My bag is not Louis Vuitton. Mm-mm. I didn't want that pressure. Mm. I wanted the only thing bringing us together was work. I wasn't trying to be your friend. I wasn't trying to accept new friends. Yeah. And that was just me setting, this is how she works. So if you, you love people say, ah, don't try that girl. She gets your cool for it. I was very okay with that because I used to tell people, she too proud is better than see finish. Yeah. So I didn't mind the Definitely. names that came with. Of course, the names that is easy to tag someone like me is proud, bossy, um, they will name you all sorts <laughs> because you are standing your ground and you're yeah. not allowing people to take advantage of you. So, I mean, I, I got that starting, but it was important for me to set a standard because as a Christian, the way the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I was very in, interested in building my foundation because I knew that I might not have this time yeah. or capacity forever. But if I've built this foundation, everybody knows this is a pattern, this is the structure, this is how to work with her, this is what to say. But so they when I started, prepared. Yes, already, it was very yeah. important to let people know that when you come to me, you have to come correct. I'm not one that is, like I said, I'm not trying to be a celeb as long as my money is complete. Um, okay, I'm yeah. not trying to also be a celeb's friend. Mm. So I was not under all those pressure to be who I was not. I was very confident in in who I was. It wasn't about what the clothes I was wearing, the kind of air I had on or mm. shoes. It was value. Like that's why I kept saying value, value, value. Do your work, do it well. I hope you liked what I did. I hope I was impactful and keep it moving. So yeah. Lovely. You have a responsibility, you know, to manage a lot of mm-hmm. people. I know that should come with some pressure. How do you manage that pressure to, you know, make sure that everybody is gaining something? Human beings, like I said, <laughs> I, I get this a lot because everybody wants to be special. Mm. Everybody wants to be the center of attraction. Like for that, I try my best, but I pray more about that because it, when it comes to Like I said, humans will always be humans. I give everybody the same platform, but everybody um, uses the platform to their benefits. It's not in my place to tell you how to use the platform. I've provided a platform for you. You should be the one to work at that. I can't give you platform and still be chasing you. I'm trying my best. I have other people that I'm attending to. So I train my talents to be hardworking. I'm always available. They know I'm available. I'm trying my best, but I'm not going to spoon feed you. There are some people I spoon feed. When it's time to remove the spoon, go and find your spoon yourself. <laughs> so everybody knows, ah, Mr. has switched up on you. It's time. Even till now, even the ones that are big, you are slacking. I warn you, warn you, warn you, advice, advice. I will move on. It's left to you to catch up. It's a moving train. Yeah. So um, when it comes to managing, everybody wants you to baby them. Everybody you know, wants to be... Like, treat especially. I treat everybody specially <laughs> to the best of my ability. Yeah. I like people feeling good about themselves. I like people because I like it. So I like attention. So I like giving people attention yeah. too. But I can only try my best to make sure that I'm doing the best I can do for you. And I need you to also trust that I'm doing the best, the best and yeah. not look at another person's garden. What are your own? <laughs> Let everybody water their own. <laughs> okay you've led strategies across you know beauty fashion mm-hmm. travel food what in your opinion is the most untapped potential in nigeria travel is expensive because of the part of the way i love to travel ah, okay i wanted to say ah, it's been a long time i travel but they would drag me now across <laughs> <of> my instagram <laughs> But yeah, traveling for ni- Nigerian creatives is quite expensive. Yeah. By the time you convert Naira to dollar, to pounds, oh even God. I'm supposed to be in London next month, think, looking at the ticket price, I want to do summer too. Ah, summer uh. no summer. <laughs> we keep it moving. But yeah, there are two summer no summer. It's not summer. <laughs> this year, ah, it did not summer at all. When I saw the, the, the summer bill, oh my I saw God. my brother's school face. Oh, I saw everything. Yeah. I said, ah, 
scale of preference. <laughs> I will see summer, another summer, not this summer. <laughs> but yeah, like that that's that's just it. Sorry, what was the question again? Yeah, um, what is the most untapped potential? Yeah, like I said, yeah, traveling. Travel. Tra- tra- travel, because there are a lot of amazing... Uh, travel opens your mind. It gives you another reason to walk. You will realize that it's not only to eat three square meal. Yeah. You want to go to nice places, mm-hmm. take nice pictures. You meet people. You learn about other people's culture. There's so much potential that comes with traveling. But because as creatives in this part of the world, our economy is not giving us power. Our passport also does not help. It you doesn't. try for visa, they deny you. Try again, they deny you. You say if you give up, you say what's in their country. <laughs> but there, are, there's a lot of potential when it comes to seeing the world, especially from your point of view. You see, I mean, there are so many materials online. There's no way in the world you want to know about or see that is not available online. online but yeah. seeing from your point of view, it it's another mind blowing exposure that I think everybody should experience. Yeah. But it's very hard to do yeah. that. Like I was also checking travel yes, tickets. Yes, but if if it's you not can, less than two million. Yeah, if you can afford it, you should do it. It it will help you. I started to see life different when I started to travel. I started to have more reasons to 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 life <laughs> when I started to travel. So, ah, bank account. I'm coming back. I'll go and work again. <laughs> So what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your career so far, especially when, you know, managing talents and also navigating the complexities that come with being in such a fast paced industry? I don't want to say important because I can't think of everything right now. I'll just say one of the things I've learned in the space that I'm in is it is possible, right? Every dream Everything that you've planned, that you've wished for, everything is possible. If only you can be consistent, you can work hard, you can also position yourself to be somebody of value. Mm. It might take time. For some people, it takes more time. For some people, it happens instantly. But whatever journey that you are you are on, it is possible. Just keep going at it. Yeah. How do you position yourself? especially in the industry that you're in? First, I will say again, I know people say my own is too much, (laughs) but first, once you are someone of value, you start to connect with people. You connect with people either via social media or offline networking events. You start to talk about what you do, what you have to offer, how you can, you start to, the the fastest way I made money was solving people's problem, right? So I Mm. encourage people to solve problem. If you chase money, money will run away. But if you chase value, money will come. When you do something valuable, you can put a price tag on it, money would come. But if you just say, I want money, I want money, you want money, what do you want? What are you doing to get money? So you must have something to offer the world. You must have something to offer. It might be products, it might be services, it can be your mind. When I started, for I know for a long time, 20... 19, before, even before the lockdown and during the lockdown, I was struggling. I'm like, ah, I'm too smart. I'm too intelligent. Well, ah, I don't have shishi. I can't depend on this salary. Rich people don't depend on only on salary. salary yeah. I started to think. I started to pray. I was such a, I can't remember, forget rather, I can't forget. I was really praying about it. I wanted direction and clarity. And I started to think like, because I've seen a lot of smart, intelligent, brilliant people broke. Yes. It exists. I had a lot of examples that I didn't want to be like. So I was just thinking like, so what I did, I said, you know what? I think I'm smart. I I can do it. I started to sell value. Ah, it's not only this work I'm doing. It's only nine to five work. Oh, I can still do this. I can help you get this. I can help you talk to this. Commission they'll give me. Wow. Middleman <laughs> gets money. I started to do it. And like I said, I learned on the journey. I started to explore more things I could do. I started to work with more people. People started to trust in what I could do based on what they saw that I was yeah. doing already. Oh, can you do this? Will you help me? Can you join my team? I started to do that and I'm here today. 
Guys, even if you don't take anything out of this conversation, <laughs> make sure you take that value. Value. Value is so important. Yes. It's very, very important that you're offering some Something. sort of value, yeah. at least. True that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what inspired you to create TT Effect and what do you hope to do with that platform and community? TT Effect. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it just came from my group of people that just wanted to identify with me like ah we are mysterious people oh. you know that pride that comes with <laughs> ah i see my manager ah don't worry my manager is coming you know just the joy that came from yeah the, my creators wanting to identify with me and i can't re- even remember i can't remember who formed the who name formed. no it used to be tim tenny so it used to be my team, your team. So oh. it used to be, ah, I'm team, team Tenny. So I'm like, you know, then we started to grow. So when I started to train them and skill them, I'm like, you know what? Like I tell people, there must be something about you that makes you stand out from the crowd. So when we started to go through that journey of training and mentorship, you just say, ah, so when people do something, you say, hmm, that's the TT effect. Oh. So that's why it came. So the TT effect is the Tinteni effect. Yeah. When you work with these people in this community, <laughs> there is always something up. So that's what we used to say. So when outsiders or my friends or industry people will say, ah, but I'll translate. So they will say like, ah, when I saw this creative, I knew that this person must be your product. Oh. So that's why I say, ah, don't worry, it's the TT effect. Nice. So that's why when we wanted to open social media account, everybody just say, ah, TT, are you in TT effect? And it's, we're so many that they don't even know themselves most <laughs> times, but it was like, ah, this is the TT effect. So yeah, that's how we came about the name. But the community is just a group of creatives in different fields doing amazing things, um, offering value like I always preach to them. Um, and just living their dreams and inspiring others. Yeah. And I plan to do so, so much with the community, so much. Um, I have a TT Academy where people grow from a cat from the academy to TT effects to the full management, which is deaf ears. Oh, nice. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I love that. TT yeah. effect. Yeah. Hey. Ah, we need slogan though. What is it? TT yeah, effect. Like, you need to like there was so we thought that will follow. <laughs> Let's go and think. <laughs> okay. So um, how do you identify a potential talent? Like, is there some qualities that you look out for that is important, you know, to be successful in this industry? Yeah. First thing that catches my attention is creativity. I see some things. I'm like, hmm, this person is creative. Like, that's what catches my attention. Then I start to watch the person online from, I always tell people from social media, I can tell who you are from social media. Mm. Now nah, I don't have time like that. But that time, yeah. I used to have time. From social media, I can tell who you are from the kind of contents that you post, the kind of things you repost, the kind of your comment section, how you respond. I could, I can have, I might not be accurate, of course, but I can tell the kind of person that you are. I can now take a step forward to message the person, have a conversation with them. Like, where's your headspace at right now? What do you plan to achieve with this thing? Do you plan to do it full time? Is it just another hobby for you? You know, have conversations with them. And from the conversation, I can tell where we are going. If we're going to work together, if I'm going to add you to the community and I can just have an idea on if I want or not. Okay. So we mostly see the, you know, the glamorous sides of creatives life. Yeah. What is the toughest conversation that you've had to have with a con- with a content creator about the challenges of the industry? <sighs> I it's them ex- I think the toughest conversation is after they experience it. Mm. For some of them that maybe um because of stubbornness Mm. Mm. they did not listen to me <laughs> then they now experience it themselves and i had to come back is it that with i told you or be gracious to them so it's always very difficult because now they've they've how do i put it you it's it's just like a baby that i'm nurturing they you need not push the baby to the world the person now like a prodigal son mm. The Constance. person has become hardened as a lot has happened. The person is no longer the innocent, the baby, cute baby. Yeah. So that's the, always the tough thing for me. So I, I now have to change strategy. Because this person has experienced 
the things are not so good. This person has formed, of course, they are not kids, has formed a new mindset. This person has lacked trust. This person has been broken. So having to build again, having to explain again, having to point them in the right direction again is just very difficult for for, yeah, for me. So do you think as a talent manager, is there a need for visibility for the work you do? Or maybe talent managers in your community? Yeah, for talent managers, the most work that we do is always behind the scene, mm. to be fair. It's just that um, when you're your talents are now very popular. Somehow, somehow, people will find you. People will know that, oh, this is the person managing that person. Yeah. But most of our work is always, always behind the scene. I mean, cleaning up the mess when the party is over, ensuring that the, the party is, um, the table is set before yeah. your talent comes. So it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So a lot of talent managers don't get their flowers. And that's why, you know, yeah, like, you yeah, guys go through so much to build A someone. lot of talent managers yeah. don't get their flowers. And why... Um, Maybe I'll say I have a difference is because I don't manage only one type of talent. I manage diverse talents. Oh. So I'm not just a music talent manager yeah. or a fashion talent manager. I do I'm doing everything in different capacities. So for talent managers that are just music artists that you've built so hard with an artist then when the artist now pops and makes a mistake they go back to mm. zero. It's is affecting also the talent manager yeah. that's putting so much work. And many times, maybe the talent did not listen or thinks, oh, you can't tell me what to do anymore. Or they think the spotlight is on them. Nothing you see matters. It's very hurtful for them. Very heartbreaking. Like a lot of talent man. So you won't even see award ceremony and you see award for talent managers. That, like, is, that is exactly because what I don't I'm even saying. Think categories like that is a voting thing because... <laughs> Every talent manager is doing an amazing, amazing work. Yeah. Managing human beings is one of the most difficult things to do in life. So yeah, shout out to all the talent managers out there. I see you and I love you. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, you've managed and helped you know a lot of creators mm -hmm. be successful. What is there a specific or particular story of a creator that you know touched you the most? There's so many. I have so many. So so so. Can so. you tell us one like the most special one to you? I, I don't. I honestly don't have a special one. Okay, this maybe not, not special. This is not me trying to be diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have a, a special one. Everybody's story is peculiar. Yeah. And it, to me, in different ways. Um. Um. So many stories. Is it from Abike Sugar coming from Mushin mm. to becoming everything that she has become or from beauty goddess relocating her from Potakot or a rainy day from Abuja. So many talents or Rina's mom having so much trust issues releasing him to me, of course, because she has lost, um, he has lost, she has, he has lost a sibling and she lost a child mm -hmm. and that old trust issues and I just finally say, you know what, I'm like, it's, so, so many, or Bira from Ikorodu to the world, wow. that's just from a family that is not exposed, they don't even know how to speak English, and I had to force her to go to school, mm. to learn to, I mean, she's still in school, she has not graduated, but she's in her third year now, doing great things for herself, working with Shaggy, I see her every time from that shy girl to becoming very bold and confident in yeah. what she's doing. So many stories I can't even remember, I've seen People actually make money from this content creation to see themselves through school, fend for their families. And when I get testimonies like that, it, it just warms my heart to, to also remind me that I'm doing something right. I just have so many stories. People that have been able to save money to relocate to Lagos, to buy their first cars, mm. to buy their first houses. Some of them are currently building houses. Some rented their first apartment away from their parents. It's, it's so many, so many people starting businesses, people going on global stages, yeah. people traveling the world because of me, you know, it's just beautiful to, to, to hear. I see. know that really you know, <laughs> lifts you up and just you yes, know, gives you does. that fulfillment. It does. It does. So social media is a platform that, you know, equates success with how viral you go, or how many followers you have. And that kind of comes with its own pressure. Mm -hmm. How would you advise upcoming content creators to deal with these pressures that come with social media? If people would take 
my word for what it is. Don't focus too much on the numbers. I have a lot of creators that are making sustainable income and they are not the biggest in terms of numbers, mm. even in terms of every requirement as a big creator. Yeah. They are not yet, but they are, they have a steady source of income. They are, money is coming in steady. So um, I think focus more on the value, the creativity, um, the way that you do your thing. Nobody will do it like you. Everybody's doing the same thing, but in different ways. Yeah. So make sure you are as authentic as possible. Um, make sure you build your community, um, not to chase clouds, not to chase... Um, numbers. The numbers will come if you stay authentic and if you stay true to yourself. Yeah. So don't put, I know there's a lot of pressure. There is that I have pressure. like minds where you share your concerns with people to encourage you and all of that. But yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> you Just will be fine. Make sure you're, uh, you know, giving value, like yeah. Ms. Tenya said. Value is so important. Okay, as a talent manager for African t creators, what does representation mean to you? It's very, very important. Working in a global space also um, has made me more um, focused and serious about representation. Yeah. The reason why a lot of things don't get to us Africans is because there's no representation in rooms like that. Like I said, the stories, the the uh, label of our heroes past, like we keep hearing that year, 1990, 1980. We need more 2020 yeah. people that are... And I see a lot of people doing it, which is great, but we need more people speaking up for... Africans. We need more people speaking up for Nigerians. We need more people speaking up for black people. So um, I know that it might seem like an agenda, but it's actually more than an, an agenda. It's serious. It's not, it's not noise. Yeah. We need representation at different tables or global rooms and conversations because it's important for, in whatever, like I said, it's very important for me by default, when I go for global conferences or I travel out to work, it's important that I wear African, I wear Nigerian. Yeah. It's important for me to let people see, even when I was schooling in China, teaching Chinese kids, by default in China, black is ugly. Um, everything negative is, is African. It's black, it yeah. was important for me as a black girl to represent where I come from. It was important for me to show people that we have great places in Africa. Yeah. We have great minds in Africa. So everywhere that I am, I see myself as a billboard where I must represent. I'm first Nigerian yes. before I'm even Tenny. So it was important for me everywhere I travel, I make sure that I have a made in Nigeria outfit. At least that will start the conversation. Oh, you look nice. I'm like, yeah, and tell you what I'm wearing. At least things made to start Nigerian. conversations yeah. and let people know that, oh, yes, it's Nigerian. Yes, it's African, but we need representation as much as possible. That's really important. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like most African and Nigerian creators are really doing their best yes, yes, to you know, showcase best. Nigeria yeah. and Africa to the world. Yeah. So personally and professionally, how would you define success? Or what does success mean to you? Success for me is empowering people. Success for me is giving to people that cannot give me back. Success for me is um, people living through me. Mm. Success for me is people seeing me as a representation or a billboard that it is possible. That's what success is to me. Making sure that even after my time here on earth, people can walk clear parts. People can become also successful. People can impact their world because um, they met me. Yeah. yeah. That's what success is I for me. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give to, you know, upcoming creators that are looking to break into this space? What would you tell them? Chill. <laughs> Relax. Right? Find your reason. Find your why. Why are you doing this? Is it because of the glitz and the glam? Is it because of money? You need to find your reason. If these things I listed is not your reason, that you're passionate, you want to create value, you want to give value, go for it, stay consistent, learn, invest in yourself, invest in your craft. Don't be pressured 
rise above the noise. Ignore the noise. People will talk. They will think that you see and say, ah, it would be nice to have. Yeah. Everybody has different journey. For you, it might be faster. It might be slower. But bet on yourself and stay true to yourself. Lovely. I hope you guys got that. <laughs> Okay, so outside of work, because we're around, you know, yeah. outside of work, what personal, what's your f- personal passion or hobbies that you, you uh, know, do my outside hobby, of work? It's rich people. Oh, okay. I'm still looking for money. <laughs> I like to travel. Yeah. I like to travel. I'm that person that I'll say, ah, my next birthday, mm, my <laughs> friends, don't worry, I'll pay for your tickets. Okay. Let's go and have fun. Like, okay. I actually like to travel. I like to have fun. I like to take pictures. I like to dress up. I like to look nice. I mean, you I, do look nice. <laughs> thank you. I just enjoy every. I like to... I just like everything fun. Outside work, I like partying. I like meeting new people, having conversations, and just learning new things outside my country or my region, yeah. Okay, so what's next for Miss Tenny? Uh, what's next for me? Um, scaling my agency, my 360 agency, um, deaf, ears mani- deaf ears management. Uh, we'll do the worst stop. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's next. Um, doing more TVCs. I produce TVCs. Oh. Doing more TVCs. Um, and also scaling for more um, international representation. So international companies that are coming to Nigeria and they need... Um, direction, they mm. need strategy, planning, execution, and all of that. I'm your go-to person. Um, of course, onboarding more talents, representing more talents, making sure that people's dreams continue to become a reality. And yeah, for myself, just doing that, at the end, lines will fall in pleasant places for me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So what would you like to say to your community, your team? Yeah. TT effect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just glad that um, I get to share my story, um, especially because this is different. I, a lot of times is people finding out or wanting to know what I am and not necessarily going behind the filter, right? Yeah, yeah you got that. <laughs> and people not necessarily going to see what... Yeah. Um, Tenny was like growing up, like now that built Tenny, that's T-E-N-N-I-E to become a brand. Um, I'm just glad I get to share my story. I hope it inspires you watching. I hope it inspires you to know that everything is possible. Bank on yourself, bet on yourself. Everything is possible. Like I say, as long as you're not hurting anyone or going against the rule of God, Everything is possible. I'm just expect so many great things from me. Um, follow me on social media. Uh, my social media is definitely a reflection of myself. I share a lot of things there, yeah. and people can actually see my day to day life from <laughs> from my social media. But yeah, just impacting lives the little way I can. So. Thank you for listening to me. I hope you learned one or two things. Oh, there you go, guys. <laughs> like, thank you so much, Miss Tenny, for coming on the show. You're and, you know, sharing your journey and thank your experiences you. with us. It's been so inspiring and very impactful. Like, I feel thank like you. I've gotten so much from this conversation. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank I hope you, you had fun. I did. I did. And I spoke a lot. Yeah. I talk too much. Sorry. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. I love that. Thank you again for You're coming. Welcome. It's been an immense pleasure. I knew today's conversation was going to be great. I was really looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Um, I hope you get and learn something from this conversation. Like I said in the beginning, if you did not learn anything, make sure you take that you need to always, you know, provide value, give value. So thank you so much for sticking with us to the end. You're a real G. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.